Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome to the first module of Plant Biotechnology course. This is the first lecture in this module. And in this module, we will talk about plant tissue culture in general, where we would discuss variety of topics including totipotency, differentiation, somatic embryogenesis, uh, various parameters that impact the uh, in vitro regeneration, micropropagation, initiation of cultures from diverse type of explants and so on all these topics will be covered in this unit my name is manoj sharma and i am working as an assistant professor of biology at jawaharlal nehru university new delhi in jnu i teach plant biotechnology and genetic engineering at school of biotechnology this project is sponsored by dth Swamprabha, MHRD, New Delhi. So, in today's lecture, we will talk about mainly cellular totipotency, organogenesis, and somatic embryogenesis. Cellular totipotency. So, the as per the standard definition of uh, cellular totipotency or the totipotency, it is the genetic potential or the capability of the differentiated or specialized cells to regenerate into a complete plant. This is called as cellular totipotency. In other words, it is, it can be said as a, it is a characteristic of plant cells where the potential of forming all the tissues or organs or organ types is retained with the cells even when these cells mature to differentiate into specialized forms to perform specialized functions. So therefore, theoretically we can say as long as a plant cell is alive that it has a well uh, intact membrane system and it has a viable nucleus, it is capable of uh, reverting back to meristematic state and hence the complete plants can be produced from uh, these cells. Now, as the cells divide and gain specialized forms, animal cells usually loses the potential to grow into a new organism. However, in plant cells, all the living plants, uh, all the cells retain this capability to revert back to the meristematic state on exposure to the favorable environmental conditions. So it's very important that though it is capability is there, but yes, those induction conditions are required which will induce these cells to regenerate into a complete plant. So therefore, we can use any plant tissue or organ uh, like a stem leaf or a root segment for the initiation of culture. So like this is a tomato seedling and we can use any of its uh, living part like we can use the leaf segments from here uh, or we can use the small stem segment, uh, we can cut the small stem segment and we can use them as a uh, explant to start the culture or even we can use the root segment or the root apical meristem to initiate the culture and these plant parts or the tissues or the cells which are used to initiate these cultures is called, they are called as the explants. Even a single cell from a suspension culture or uh, can be used to initiate this process of uh, regeneration and can full protein uh, plant can be formed. So in the culture they usually uh, in a standard uh, they are de-differentiated to form a 
uh, undifferentiated mass of uh, cells which is called callus and then that callus is induced for the morphogenic responses which result into the production of uh, these complete plants. Therefore, all the living plant cells irrespective to their specialization status or the physiological status has the potential to revert back to the meristematic state when these are exposed to favorable cultural conditions and they can regenerate into a complete plant. Now, before going ahead, let's learn about few important terms that we will be using frequently in the following lectures. The first is the differentiation. The a process by which a cell acquires modification in its form and function is called as differentiation. In plants, meristematic cells, they divide and give rise to different type of cells uh, which form later tissues and organs and have the specialized function with the specialized forms. In fact, in the multicellular organisms including animal and plants, the whole body is actually derived from a single cell that is the zygote which is formed by the fusion of the male and female gametes. With the zygote divide and re-divide and through the process of differentiation, it uh, specializes in, to form the special tissues and organs and which results into the formation of a complete body. Now, the cells which uh, that undergo this differentiation and uh, uh, gain a specialized forms to perform special functions are called as differentiated cells. Second is de-differentiation. So, de-differentiation is literally the opposite of differentiation. So, it is the process or the phenomena, cellular process in which the mature or differentiated cells lose their special forms, lose their special status and revert back to the meristematic state are called as, is called as de-differentiation. In the differentiation, less specialized cells are transformed into more specialized cells. In de-differentiation, more specialized cells are revert back to the less specialized forms which perform the generalized functions. And the cells uh, obtained through the process of de-differentiation, they are called as de-differentiated cells. Next is re-differentiation. So when re de-differentiated cells are induced for the morphogenetic responses or uh, are induced for the differentiation, this process is called as a uh, re-differentiation. So, it's basically the simulates exactly the differentiation. However, the starting material here are the de-differentiated cells and hence it is called as a re-differentiation. Another is transdifferentiation. The, the process by which a cell type present in one tissue or organ converts to a specialized cell type or of other tissue or other organ without going through the process of de differentiation. That is called as a trans, trans differentiation. So, in other words, transdifferentiation refers to the conversion of a differentiated cell of one particular developmental commitment to a differentiated cell of another developmental commitment. Like here is the leaf segment, it has a mesophyll cells or the leaf cells, different kind of leaf cells. Uh, which are filled with the chlorophyll and chloroplast and the main function of these cell is to is the photosynthesis. And when they are induced to de differentiate, they make callus. And this process of uh, uh, induction or uh, when the specialized cells are losing the status to become the undifferentiated cell, this is called as a de differentiation. And 
the callus cells then can be induced to form any specialized kind of cells it may be different kind of shooting responses may be the rooting response or any particular specific type of cells can be initiated or induced from these undifferentiated cells like here trachery cells are induced uh, trachery cells are the part of the xylem which are involved in the transport of uh, solutes in plants and this process is called as a redifferentiation however if this cells of uh, this particular developmental commitment if they transform directly to the tissue type of a different development commitment from the photosynthesis to the transport without the process of dedifferentiation or redifferentiation then this process is called as trans differentiation another term is regeneration so the typically the generation of a entire plant from a cultured explant is called as regeneration regeneration may occur by a callus formation or directly from the explant as we saw for the trans differentiation where we saw that how the one cell type is directly changing into another specialized cell type and another most com commonly used term would be a callus so the callus is a mass of a proliferating unorganized or undifferentiated cells which is produced from any plant part tissue or organ that are separated from the parent plant and are grown aseptically on the nutrient media under controlled environmental conditions usually they are callus are grown on the on the solid substrate uh, where all the media are uh, all the media or nutritional components are uh, provided in the solid substrates so let's discuss now about the organogenesis so the standard definition of organogenesis is it's a process of differentiation which involves the formation of various organs like shoots roots uh, etc from the vegetative plant tissues or from the cultured plant cells or from the undifferentiated mass of cells that is the callus so actually this is just the differentiation as we discussed in the earlier slides however here the it is restricted to the formation of organs uh, only and hence it is called as a organogenesis now as we discussed earlier any of the explant any any of the uh, plant part can be used for the production of uh, uh, these uh, in vitro cultures to initiate the in vitro culture however these explants which are plants part which are used they should be mitotically active cells hence the the regions on the plant which has the mitotically active uh, tissue uh, usually explant should be prepared uh, from those regions because the distribution or the physiological status of the different tissues or different organs in the plant body is uh, it varies from one tissue to another hence the tissues which are mitotically active and physiologically younger or physiologically active they are usually used to initiate the cultures so theoretically again the tissue should be mitotically active as we discussed earlier now this is kind of organogenesis is one of very important aspects of the plant tissue culture and is widely used for in vitro regeneration in plant tissue culture so uh, plant growth regulators or uh, other media component nutritional components uh, they play a specific role or significant role in this process of uh, organogenesis so it's, it's a very important commercial aspect so usually uh, organogenesis may take place directly from the from the uh, cells uh they may direct without the formation of callus but more common is indirect where 
we go through the uh, callus formation and then the differentiation. So here is the list of uh, various uh, uh, explants which are usually used in one or other species uh, like apical meristems. Mo most of these uh, tissues which are, uh, which are uh, highlighted here or marked here are uh, physiologically active and mitotic mitotically active and hence they can be used like the apical meri meristems continuously dividing cells are there leaves so specifically it's here we are talking about the younger leaves younger growing leaves not the mature leaves axillary meristems or the stems which are the younger growing stems or the cotyledons hypocotyls roots or uh, uh, root to apical meristems so again uh, we are talking about uh, the younger tissues or the mitotically active tissues. In addition to this, once the plant matures, fluorescence uh, grows, so the fluorescence parts, younger fluorescence parts or even the immature embryos from the developing seeds are also used for, uh, uh, for initiating the in vitro cultures. Now, different species may respond very differently to the, these different kind of uh, uh, different kind of uh, uh, explants like the physiological status of a leaf in a young seedling young dicot seedling versus a, a young monocot seedling is very different and the regeneration potential it has been found that the uh, leaves from the dicot uh, uh, can be used or the younger leaves from the dicots can be used to initiate the cultures. However, leaf tissue as an explant is not successful or very successful for initiating the in vitro cultures in the monocots. So, the actual success of uh, these meristem or uh, these explants would depend on the, on the physiological status and mitotical uh, mitotic activity status of uh, these these cells or the cells present in those explants and may differ from one species to another species significantly uh, one may be successful leaf may be successful in one species and it may not be successful in other species like we just discussed about uh, monocot and dicot the organogenesis uh, may be uh, grouped or put into the two categories depending upon which pathway does it use for the production or the for the regeneration or the, of the organs. One is the direct organogenesis that is the development of the new organs directly from the explants and second is the indirect organogenesis that is the development of the new organs through the callus formation as we saw earlier also the difference between the trans differentiation and uh, the differentiation. Uh, so, in the indirect organogenesis, the explants which are more specialized usually they are de-differentiated into uh, less specialized forms or undifferentiated cells that is the callus which are then evoked for the morphogenetic responses through the supply of uh, growth regulators or the media components and uh, uh, organs are uh, regenerated whereas direct organogenesis is the production of organs without the formation of callus. So the direct organogenesis uh, uh, if uh, so when we when we transfer any of uh, these uh, organs or uh, tissues uh, on a medium supplemented with the growth hormones uh, the, the the somatic tissues they are capable of regenerating into adventitious buds or the shoots or the uh, initiate the new shoots or the new terminal uh, meristems and these buds are formed directly from the plant organ. Uh, there is no callus production, no dif de differentiation and any piece of uh, tissue can uh, result in the formation of uh, these kind of uh, structures and this type of organogenesis is uh, uh, called as the direct organogenesis. So here is the example what we see is the uh, uh, and uh, apical meristem is or the shoot apical meristem is excised and uh, then it is induced to form the multiple shoot tips or the multiple buds at the same region. Now they are induced to proliferate, they grow further and then they are separated 
from each other and transferred onto the rooting media individually. Now, when they are separated and placed individually, once they produce these root buds or the roots they grow into the media, each of the seedling becomes, uh, each of the plantlet or the shoot becomes an independent plantlet and then they can be transferred onto the soil for the acclimate, acclimation and uh, new complete plants, separated, separate plants are uh, regenerated. So this type of uh, organogenesis where callus formation or de-differentiation is not involved is called as a uh, direct organogenesis. Second is the indirect organogenesis. So indirect organogenesis is that is the development of the new organ through the callus formation. In general in plant tissue culture, indirect organogenesis is more common as compared to the direct organogenesis. Like here is the leaf tissue which is specialized, the cells of leaves are specialized uh, to form uh, the photosynthetic functions, uh, photosynthesis related functions and now when they are induced for the de-differentiation in response to the uh, growth regulators, these cells form the callus, undifferentiated mass of uh, uh, these uh, mitotically active cells and then these are induced to evoke the morphogenetic responses like the shooting response and then the rooting response which leads to the production of new uh, plantlets and this is a redifferentiation. So this process where specialized cells are redifferentiated onto the callus and then the callus or undifferentiated cells are induced to form the organs is called as a indirect organogenesis. Uh, typically any of the explant can be used for uh, indirect uh, organogenesis. The indirect organogenesis potential of uh, different organs of the on the plant body is also higher as compared to the direct organogenesis. Direct organ organogenesis in fact is, uh, is, uh, is uh, hypothesized or uh, explained based upon the predetermin predetermination theory. That means the cells uh, need to have a predetermination uh, or pre-induction for the production of these organs only then they can be initiated uh, or uh, induced by providing the uh, by providing the uh, artificial culture environment or nutritional environment. So indirect organogenesis is more common and more successful in, uh, in, in tissue cultures. So technically any of the explants can be used to initiate the culture and here is an example of uh, cotyledon explants from the tomato which are harvested and uh, they are small they are small segments are made from the cotyledons and which are being used for the in vitro culture so they are incubated <coughs> on the callus induction media and uh, in uh, uh, this uh, induces or induces the formation of uh, this mass of uh, de differentiated cells of the mass of uh, callus so basically this process here uh, the first step, the callus induction, is actually the de-differentiation of the specialized cells to the less specialized cells to perform the generalized functions. And uh, once the enough amount of the callus has been formed, and then they are transferred onto the shoot induction media. So now we won't need to supplement the uh, media components or the growth regulators which are required to initiate the morphogenic responses from the uh, from this uh, uh, calli or undifferentiated mass of cells. Uh, now on, the, on incubation onto the shoot induction media in few days this callus uh, regenerate the or develop the shoot buds which later forms the shoot uh, or uh, small uh, shoot apical meristem which grow into the small shoots. Once uh, they, the shoots are allowed to proliferate so that uh, sufficient, uh, when they grow in a sufficient size like maybe 4 to 6 centimeter or 7 centimeter, 
uh, we need to transfer them onto the rooting media. So it depends upon uh, the culture vessel if we are growing these uh, calli or we if we are inducing the shoot induction in the petri plates. So for the proliferation or elongation of the shoots, we need to transfer these calli into the large jam bottles. So once we transfer into the, once the shoots uh, sufficient uh, length of the shoots is uh, is achieved uh, sufficient elongation has occurred we transfer them onto the uh, rooting media where root induction takes place once these shoots they produce the roots they becomes the complete plantlets and now these plantlets can are ready to transfer onto the onto the soil and they start behave independent plants so basically here through the util, uh, using the cotyledonary explants we uh, we harvested the cotyledonary explants from the tomato seedlings we induced or uh, induce the de-differentiation process where specialized cells were transformed into uh, uh, less specialized cells or undifferentiated cells which later now we evoke using the growth regulators or the other nutritional media components we ego evoke the morphogenic responses or a differentiation cyto differentiation responses which led to the development of uh, the shooting response from this media we let the shoot grow uh, elongate once the sufficient uh, length is achieved we transfer them onto the rooting media and finally our plantlets are uh, will be ready for uh, uh, transplantation onto the onto the soil and in this way any of the explants can be used for the differentiation and this process of organogenesis now we will talk about somatic embryogenesis so embryogenesis in general represent the development period when a zygote undergo a series of differentiation events leading to the formation of mature embryo this differentiation usually involves a series of predetermined pattern of cell division organ formation which lead to the formation of a mature embryo so if we in the, in the plants or uh, in, in plants or the animal the, this zygotic or the embryogenesis it uh, takes place it starts with the fusion of the male or the female gamete that that produces the zygote so this zygote now divide and redivide in a in in a manner or in a series of predetermined patterns of the cell division and uh, uh, and lead to the formation of uh, uh, more specialized tissues leading to the finally formation of uh, the the fully mature embryo now this embryo in the plant possesses two distinct regions the mature embryo uh, this is the plumule and uh, radical so the one uh, one leads to the production or the formation of uh, the shoot apical meristem of the shoots and the uh, second lead to the production of uh, or the formation of uh, roots when the embryo germinates and then we have these uh, cotton cotyledonary leaves uh, which uh, uh, the first leaves appear when the it germinates and appear from the from the uh, from the seed so embryogenesis and this whole process of embryogenesis where male and female gametes are uh, involved and the fertilization of male and gamete is involved to formation of the zygotes and uh, leading to the formation of embryo this whole process is restricted to uh, the specialized reproductive structures and uh, like the ovules or the embryo sac and the fertilization is essential for the production of uh, zygotic embryos now fertilization is essential for the production of zygotic embryos but fertilization independent embryogenesis do exist in nature too now what so 
what exactly that means? That means that the somatic cells, any of the somatic cells or the sporophytic uh, cells uh, from the uh, uh, from the any part of the plant uh, may be able to make the somatic embryos. It does exist in nature. However, in nature, it uh, it it occurs in the sporo sporogenic tissue or sporophytic tissue, which is associated with the uh, reproductive cells. So what exactly happens is like this is the somatic cells or the sporogenic tissue in the reproductive cells and uh, it, uh, it is induced, it gets the induction signal and uh, these cells, some of these cells they gain the induction to differentiate or initiate the process of uh, somatic embryogenesis leading to the formation of uh, full fledged complete embryos uh, as, we, uh, as we saw in the zygotic embryos. Like the zygotic embryos, this uh, uh, asexual or the somatic embryos also have uh, uh, well differentiated two distinct regions, uh, one which lead to the production of the shoots and, <coughs> and, and the roots and uh, these embryos which are produced from the somatic cells, these are called as uh, asexual embryos or the, uh, or, the, or the somatic embryos. In some plants like the citrus and mangoes, these uh, adventive or asexual embryos are naturally formed from the nucellus tissue. Now, this phenomena of development of the embryo from somatic tissues or the callus tissue is called as uh, somatic embryogenesis. It may be initiated or induced from even the single cells in the suspension culture. And embryos produced as a result of this somatic embryogenesis are called as somatic embryos or asexual embryos. So uh, now because of this process, uh, as for the zygotic embryos, the, the fertilization of the male and female gamete was essential. However, uh, this zygotic embryos which are uh, which can immediately germinate into a complete plant or uh, they may be uh, they may later be allowed to germinate into a complete plant. This add to our understanding that uh, probably the fertilization process or the fertilization of the male and female gamete is not absolutely essential for the embryogenesis or the development of the embryos in plants and uh, uh, so it is something related to the the specific environ environment uh, in the in the reproductive cells or the specialized structures like ovule or the embryo sac where uh, which result which result in the uh, induction of these embryos. So if we, we can replicate the environment in these reproductive structures artificially or in vitro, we can induce the somatic cells to form the somatic embryos which can lead to the formation of later germinate into the complete plant. So somatic, so over the, over the period of last three or four decades, these uh, factors has been well understood, the role of various nutrients, role of uh, various growth regulators or the vitamins, how they affect the uh, cultures, we will discuss later in lecture today, today's lecture too. So uh, it, it, it has been made possible to initiate the somatic embryogenesis in the in vitro culture. Now, depending upon what pathway does it take, uh, so what pathway does it take, it can be grouped or put into the two categories, either direct somatic embryogenesis or indirect somatic embryogenesis. So like, this, like the organogenesis, same phenomena or same pathways are here, development of the new somatic embryos that is directly from the explant tissue without the production of callus. And in the indirect, uh, we, uh, the indirect uh, embryogenesis process, the specialized tissue first are, are de-differentiated to form the undifferentiated mass of cells and later they are induced to form the or uh, uh, develop the embryos from the, these callus cells. So, 
that is a indirect or a direct somatic embryogenesis let's have a look on the somatic or the direct somatic embryogenesis so like these are the somatic cells this uh, and uh, these somatic cells are transferred is onto the this tissue is transferred onto the induction media or uh, the induction component uh, in, 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 the, in the form of growth regulators and uh, other nutrition component they are provided and it leads to the, uh, to the, to the initiation or induction of uh, uh, in a, it, it may be in a single cell or a group of, group of cells that uh, start developing the embryonic response and ultimately lead to the formation of uh, uh, full-fledged embryos which are completely ready to, for the to germinate they may immediately uh, germinate they can immediately germinate and uh, can form the full-fledged uh, plant so the isolated cells in the suspension culture or the protoplast uh, of alpha alpha have been successfully induced for the somatic embryogenesis so it's not only that the the actually the organs are required for to induce the somatic uh, embryogenesis even the isolated cells single cells or even the protoplast where protoplast are uh, protoplast are uh, the cells or the or when the cell wall is removed what is the remaining part of the cell that is the protoplast so even the protoplast can be induced to form the somatic embryos and that they ha it has been successfully achieved in uh, in this uh, in this system that is the alpha alpha plant system so in other words so no this is direct embryogenesis uh, it is it's not that uh, that uh, that common in nature so in other words it is uh, defined or it is hypothesized or uh, theorized based on the inherent capacity of the embryo production so it states that uh, in order to initiate the direct somatic embryos from the somatic cells somatic cells need to have an inherent capacity of uh, in in uh, uh, embryo production and this is facilitated by the optimal artificial culture condition of the culture environment that lead to the induction of the somatic embryos followed by the production of the somatic embryos later at some time we will also learn that how these somatic embryos can be used for the production of uh, uh, various uh, uh, applications like uh, the synthetic seeds indirect somatic embryogenesis as uh, again it's like uh, it's the same phenomena or hypothesis as it was for uh, uh, indirect uh, organogenesis that is the formation of uh, undifferentiated mass of cells or the callus from the explant followed by the development of uh, uh, embryos from these cells so explant cells are usually specialized we know about it like any of the explants we can use, maybe the apical meristem or the leaf or the cotyledon or the stem cuttings, all these cells, they, are, they have a specialized status. They are performing the specialized functions. So the first uh, step of uh, the indirect somatic embryogenesis is the de-differentiation. We induce the de-differentiation in these somatic cells and uh, it results into this de-differentiation st step result into the formation of a callus structure or uh, that is the mass of uh, undifferentiated cells which are mitotically active. Now, once the enough mass of uh, cells is accumulated, we transfer them onto the onto the or, uh, somatic embryogenic uh, media or the embryogenesis media or the media which is required or the regulators or the nutritional components we are that is required to induce the somatic embryogenesis. They are they are uh, provided and. Uh, during this time what happens is that uh, some of the cells they gain the potential embryogenic potential and they start developing into the embryos uh, these uh, embryos once the uh, once their cells are determined to produce the embryos they grow and form the full fledged embryos which are again uh, have the distinct region of uh, apical uh, shoot development and uh, the root development and uh, uh, cotyledon type of structure which are not actually cotyledon but those kind of uh, structures are there and then finally when they germinate 
they are uh, they 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 make the complete complete plants so uh, the artificial conditions for the induction of the somatic embryos are well optimized uh, in several systems however carrot is one of the system which is really well worked out and uh, hence carrot cells are a good model system to study the various aspect of uh, somatic embryogenesis now the in vitro cultures whether the organogenesis or the somatic embryogenesis or the redifferentiation or the differentiation or the redifferentiation these all in vitro culture conditions they are directly regulated by several parameters uh, which include or which can be grouped in three broad categories we have biological factors media or nutritional components and physical factors so the biological factors includes various parameters which are associated with the starting material that is the x plant and these parameters can directly regulate the uh, the response of these uh, tissues on the culture environment like the x plant source what was the physiological status of the cells in this uh, in the in the tissue from where they were harvested whether these x plants were harvested from highly differentiated cells or whether the tissue was mitotically dormant or physiologically dormant or more or less highly specialized tissue so depending upon that uh, there will be a direct impact obviously the highest uh, specialized cells they are difficult to de differentiate or more optimization would be required for de differentiating these uh, these uh, x plants or these cells similarly the age of the x plants with age the x plants mature plant uh, cells gain maturity and so the younger the tissue uh, better the response of uh, these tissues to the culture media but we so the physiological status from where it is harvested in which condition plant is growing uh, whether the plant is stressed or not how healthy the plant is all these factors which are associated uh, with the source of the uh, i mean source plant they can have a huge impact now second is the media composition or nutritional components now the selection of an op selection or the optimization of the right culture media has a huge impact on the success of any plant tissue culture environment these media components they play huge role and it's a it's a very very tedious or it is very important to uh, optimize the correct combination to identify the correct combination for uh, culturing uh, requirement for one particular species and specifically hard for the recalcitrant species so various media salts uh, which uh, include inorganic or the organic components or uh, inorganic salts like uh, uh, like the different elements inorganic elements then the organic source like uh, the carbon source or the vitamins or the amino acids are supplied sometime so all these media components and then very important that is the phytohormones so these these are the phytohormones or the growth regulators they have a huge impact on these on the on the in vitro culturing so the growth hormones they specifically they are required to evoke the morphogenetic responses in the in the plants and generally they are required in very low concentration very minute concentration however their their impact is significant and their the requirement of the different species may be very different for the supply or the concentration or amount of these hormones also the response of these hormones may differ at uh, their different concentrations like if we use the auxins at a very low concentration uh, it may evoke the rooting responses however if we increase the concentration of uh, uh, of uh, the auxins 
it uh, usually evokes the callousing responses that is the de differentiation so again the different explants from the same species or uh, diff plants explants from the different species they behave differently and even it's even the the different components or the different uh, type of the auxins or uh, different kind of the cytokinins they have their different uh, impact their impact may be very different Similarly, the physical factors which include pH of the media where we culture the explants, light requirements, temperature requirements in the culture room, humidity in the vessel, culture vessel or the gaseous environment in the culture vessel can have a direct impact or interfere with the culturing conditions or the culturing responses of these explants to the uh, in vitro cultures. So, uh, like uh, different species might have different light and temperature requirements and uh, so accordingly depending upon the species we need to optimize these parameters like uh, for example uh, for the somatic embryogenesis in solanum uh, it may require or it, it do require the presence of light uh, however, if we want to incubate or want to initiate the evoke the somatic embryogenic response in popular species, cali from the popular species, we need to incubate them in the absolute darkness. So these are the species species specific responses and we need to independently optimize them. And moreover, it is not only always the species specific, even the different explant from the same species in plant or they may respond differently or even many times the different conditions or the different uh, uh, steps of the uh, organogenesis may need different incubations. For example, uh, the generally the optimum temperature for the tissue culture in vitro culture is usually 24 to 28 degrees Celsius. However, in, uh, in some cases, in some species, Incubation of the callus at the low temperature increases the efficiency of the shooting response. Like in the tobacco itself, the response of the, the shooting response uh, at about 18 to 20 degrees Celsius is much better as compared to when for the shooting these cali are incubated around at 24 or 20 uh, in the range of 24 to 28 degrees Celsius. So we will certainly discuss more about these uh, media components and uh, composition in the plant tissue culture media and uh, a little bit about biological and uh, physical factors also in more detail what uh, what should keep in uh, what should be keep in mind while initiating these cultures in our next lecture. So that's it for today. Uh, quickly, if we talk about what we discussed today overall, we discussed about the cellular totipotency. And then we discuss what the organogenesis, how it is being established, what kind of organogenesis uh, is there there. And then same for the somatic embryogenesis, its establishment and the different pathways of somatic embryogenesis. So that's it for today's uh, this lecture. Thank you.